Let's move on to our six oral presentations. We will begin with uh, Anna Teresa Serra. Uh, good morning, Anna. Uh, Anna will present to us the working title Unveiling the Protective Role of Natural Bioactive Compounds Towards Colorectal Cancer. Uh, Anna, um, I will pass to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. So, uh, good morning. Uh, I would like to thank the scientific committee of this online conference uh, for selecting our work for presentation in this session. Today, I will talk uh, about the work that we have been developing at IBET, um, focus on the study of natural, comp natural bioactive compounds in colorectal cancer. So it is well known that the Mediterranean diet is associated with a reduced risk of colorectal cancer, and this has been attributed to the presence of bioactive compounds, namely phytochemicals, that are reported to present anti-cancer effects. In this field, cruciferous vegetables, citrus fruits, and olive oil have been reported to contain glucosinolates, which are the main precursors of the more bioactive uh, compounds isothiocyanates, phenolic compounds such as polymethoxylated flavones and hydroxytyrosol, which present the cancer effect in vitro and in vivo. However, the majority of these studies were performed on cell growth on monolayers or animal models that present several limitations. So the monolayer cultures present uh, the limitation in mimicking the 3D tissue architecture, while animal models present ethical uh, dilemmas and they did not mimic the human tumor microenvironment. So during the last years, our team has been working on the development of 3D cell models of colorectal cancer to el elucidate the, prote the protective role of natural compounds derived from brassicas, citrus fruits, and olive oil to, uh, towards this disease. So the 3D cell model was generating by culturing uh, the HT29 cell line in serial in stirred culture systems using these uh, spinner vessels. And using this system, we generate cell spheroids with different cell diameter, uh, diameter and, uh, character and characteristics during culture time. In particular, the spheroids collected at day seven of culture presented features of in vivo solid tumors, such as, um, uh, such as an apoptotic core, uh, an epoxia region, and also a stratified cell population and the structural complexity, as you can see here, the absence of epithelial cells in the spheroid outer ring, and the presence of cancer stem cells in the this, in this spheroid outer ring. Uh, additionally, this model presents a, a higher percentage of cancer stem cells when compared with, with to the uh, cell cultures. So stem cells uh, have, uh, have been identified in all types of tumors and have been uh, highlighted to be responsible for tumor initiation, relapse, and chemo uh, resistance. So they, they have been pointing to be a promising target for cancer treatment. So we, we, we use this model to evaluate the anti-cancer potential of natural extracts and bioactive compounds. So in the case of brassicas, our aim was to evaluate uh, the effect of isothiocyanates in rich extracts from watercress and broccoli in targeting cancer cell proliferation and stemness using this model. So the extracts were developed using supercritical fluid technology that showed to be effective in uh, extracting these compounds. So watercress extracts present phenyl isothiocyanate as the main compound, and the broccoli extract presents sulforaphane, but also other isothiocyanates and fatty acid derivatives. So when we tested in our 3D cell model, both extracts inhibit cancer cell proliferation, uh, induced cell cycle arrest and apoptosis, and modulated cancer uh, stemness. Uh, importantly, only watercress extracts um, show to reduce the cancer uh, stem cell population. 
In the second case study, our aim was to evaluate the effect of polymethoxylated flavones isolated from orange pills in improving the antiproliferative of a chemotherapeutic drug. So the polymethoxylated flavones were, were isolated from uh, orange peels in order to valorize this type of agrofood residue. In this work, the supercritical fluid technology uh, was also used to extract this compound. And uh, as you can see here, it was very selective in uh, extracting polymethoxylated flavones. Senescentin, nubilitin, tangeritin, uh, and scutlerin tetramethyl ether was, were the main um, compounds uh, isolated from the orange peel extracts. So the results showed that the extract, the uh, orange peel extract, inhibited cancer cell proliferation and targeted uh, cancer, stem, cancer stemness in the, in the 3D cell uh, model. Important combination studies with the 5 fluorocyl demonstrated that orange peel extract, uh, the mixture of the polymethoxylated flavones and also the compound alone, um, improved the antiproliferative effect of the drug, as you can see here, the line presented in black. Um, the highest synergistic effects were obtained between uh, tangerine and scutlerine uh, tetramethyl ether and the, the 5 fluorocyl and this could be related with chemical structure of these compounds. In the last case study, uh, this study was focused on the evaluation of uh, the cancer potential of phenolic compounds from virgin olive oil. So the compound selected was hydroxy and its two main colonic metabolites, such as phenylacetic acid and hydroxyphenylpropionic acid. It is important to mention that these compounds were previously detected in human feces after a diet supplementation with a phenol enriched uh, olive oil, which means that they, are, uh, they can reach the colon uh, to exert uh, their bioactive effect. We demonstrated that hydroxytrizol was the most effective antiproliferative compound in both monolayer cultures and in the 3D cell model. And hydroxytrizol was the only compound able to reduce the cancer stem cell population and inhibiting the colony forming unit capacity, which means that uh, this compound impacts the self renewal ability of the cancer cells. Overall, our results show that the 3D cell model is a promising tool to study the effect of food bioactives in colorectal cancer. And the phytochemical enriched extracts developed in our work, and also the isolated compounds, isotocyanates, polymethoxylated flavones, and hydroxytrizol, present antiproliferative effect and modulate cancer stemness in this advanced uh, model of colorectal cancer. Uh, uh, it is important to mention that the knowledge generated in this type of in vitro studies provides relevant information towards the design of uh, human intervention studies for cancer treatment. Finally, I would like to acknowledge to all the people and collaborators involved in this work from IBET, uh, uh, EPO and uh, uh, CIAL, our partners from the food, e food industry and also the funding received from IBET Export Project, INOVA for Health, FCT, Cost Action and Program of uh, FITEC. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you, Anna and Serra. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. Since, since we are a, li a little bit uh, uh, running out of time, uh, I would like to, um, uh, to tell all of you from this first session to wait until the end of the session so we can gather all the questions and then we will make up the, the time that we, that we have, okay? So thank you, okay. Anna. Again, let's move on to our second presentation. Uh, that will be done by Carlos Gomes. Good morning, Carlos. Uh, Good morning. Carlos will present uh, the, the work entitled Anti-Aging and Neuroprotective Activity of Timus Carnosus, Accus and Hydroethanolic Extracts. Carlos, let's move on to you. Thank you. Uh, just a minute. Something is wrong. OK. 
Okay, we can see it now. Yeah, yeah you can share. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry. Uh, so, good morning, all. Uh, sorry for this delay. Uh, I will be uh, presenting my work, which I would like to thank for the opportunity to present. It's about the anti-aging and neuroprotective effects of uh, uh, and heteroethanolic extract of Timus carnosus. Timus carnosus is an endemic plant from the Iberian Peninsula. It can be found in uh, some populations within uh, Portugal and uh, Spain, south coast, and also in Portugal, southwest coast. And due to its restricted location, uh, it has been listed as an endangered species, as it can only be found in uh, natural parks and natural reserves. Apart from this, it can also be found in some collections uh, in uh, Utad's uh, Botanical Garden um, that uh, were the location where we harvest uh, our plant for this, um, for this uh, study. So, um, for the methodologies, as usual for aromatic and medicinal plants, we uh, selected uh, the aerial parts that were grounded and leoph leophilized and grounded and were then used for um, the, the extraction procedure. We performed two extract procedures. One, an aqueous extract mimicking the human consumption as either an infusion, teas, uh, or as a condiment in food through the boiling process, and also an exhaustive hydroethanolic extraction method using 80% ethanol that, we're aiming, that we were aiming to extract 100% of the phytochemicals present uh, in our uh, plant material. So both our extracts were analyzed by HPLC, both DAD and mass spectrometry, resulting in chromatograms, as we see here, uh, in this image. Apart from normal uh, compounds that we can find in um, aromatic plants within the time uh, genus, uh, as uh, glycosidic uh, derivatives of some flavonoids, as luteolin or apigenin, um, the main uh, core of our extract was composed of phenolic acids, namely uh, newer compounds, as salvinolic acid A, a new isomer of this acid uh, name, we named salvinolic isomer A, uh, that was the phenolic acid present in higher contents in our extracts, also commonly found rosmarinic acid, and salvinolic acid K with high contents within this uh, plant extracts. We verified that uh, extract-dependent concentration was obtained due to the effects of the, the ethanol in the hydroethanolic extracts, and also the use of ethanol allowed us to extract another class of compounds, uh, two pentacyclic triterpenoids, ursolic acid and oleanolic acid. Uh, ursolic acid was the compound present in higher amounts in our uh, extract, in both of them, uh, in the hydroethanol extract, sorry. So uh, regarding this plant, due to previous studies, we already know that it had uh, antioxidant activity, uh, performed well against uh, several human uh, carcinogenic cell lines uh, and showing its anti-proliferative activity and also some anti-inflammatory activity. And we, uh, the, our study was to uh, evaluate its effects in anti-aging and neuroprotective activity since other time species, as for example, Timus plugioides, had shown great results uh, in this type of bioactivities. So we choose to evaluate three enzymes, acylcholinesterase, tyrosinase and elastase, Acetylcholinesterase and tyrosinase were chosen for the uh, neuroprotective activity due to the involvement in uh, metabolic pathways related to neurodegenerative diseases as Parkinson and Alzheimer, and also tyrosinase and this time melastase for uh, their effects in anti-aging activity due to the relation to uh, metabolic process within the skin. What we observed was that uh, both extracts greatly inhibited uh, acetylcholinesterase activity higher uh, inhibition for the hydroethanolic extract, most likely due to the higher content of uh, phytochemical uh, phenolic acids, flavonoids, and the pentacyclic triterpenoids, and uh, selective inhibition of elastase and tyrosinase was observed. Only aqueous extract inhibited uh, tyrosinase, and only the hydroethanolic extract inhibited elastase. 
in order to correlate these findings to our uh, phytochemical composition, we selected three of the major compounds that were available as commercial standards, rosmarinic acid, ursolic acid, and polyenolic acid, that we see that in acetylcholinesterase inhibition, as expected, uh, three of the, the, the three compounds uh, presented inhibition concerning this enzyme, uh, also correlating, correlating to the, the results we obtained for the extract since the hydroethanolic extract uh, presented higher inhibition and only the hydroethanolic extract uh, had ursolic and oleanolic acid. Regarding tyrosinase, none of the compounds at the tested concentrations um, presented inhibition. Once again, correlating to the results since uh, in, if these compounds would present uh, some inhibition, then hydroethanolic extract would have higher contents and therefore a higher inhibition. And uh, all the standards inhibited elastase activity, once again showing uh, correlation with our results since uh, most likely the concentration within aqueous extract of rosemarinic acid is not enough to produce an inhibition. And since uh, we uh, only have the triterpenoids in the retinolic acid, uh, only there the, the inhibition was observed. And so, as conclusions, um, we showed that our extracts have a potential for neuroprotective activity. Um, and extract composition dependent inhibition uh, of both elastase and tyrosinase was observed and correlated with the, the phytochemical composition. And once again, we highlighted the potential of Timus carnosus as a source of functional foods and also as a source of nutraceutical compounds. I would like to thank FCT for the funding to both the research centers and my PhD grants, uh, to the laboratories where I conduct my research, and of course, my supervisors. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, thank you for your presentation. As uh, I was saying, let's leave the questions for the end of the session. So I will invite you to be with us until the end of your, of your session. Of uh, uh, just, a, just a, a quick note, not for you, but for everyone, for the participants. I'm sorry, Carlos. If someone has problems in entering the Congress website, um, please uh, use another navigator, especially for the Mac users. We were told that uh, some of you have uh, problems in entering the page website. So let's move on for the third uh, presentation of this session uh, with Carlos uh, Shareishi. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Carlos. Um, yes, good morning. Carlos will present uh, the work entitled Anti-Inflammatory Evaluation of a Leap of Natural Compounds Identified in Mushrooms Using in Silico Studies Against Cox Enzymes. So, Carlos, let's move on to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. It's a pleasure. My name is Carlos. Uh, it's a pleasure to present my, my research in this Congress, intitulated Anti-Inflammatory Evaluation of a library of natural compounds identified in mushrooms using in silico studies against COX enzymes. Ciclooxygenase COX-1 is a protein present in physiological COX-1 and inflammatory COX-2 process. COX-1 uh, participates, COX, sorry, participates in the metabolism of arachidonic acid, acting first in oxidation and later on reduction, converting arachidonic acid in prostaglandin G2. Protein COX-1 and 2 are the target of inhibition for non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for the treatment of diseases. NSAIDs, there are some examples of NSAIDs, methanic acid, aspirin, ibuprofen, and etorcoxib. So NSAIDs is have uh, using for treatment of diseases, asthma, cardiovascular, colorectal cancer, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases, osteoarthritis, and rheumatoid arthritis. So, used for a long time, cause adverse effects, according for European medicines agents, such as gastrointestinal, renal, and cardiovascular problems. So, need alternative to compounds. Therefore, it is necessary to identify new molecular entities 
that act by inhibition COX-1 and 2. Or, according to Wuller, there is a push approximately 1.8 billion to introduce a new drug on the market. Therefore, computational tools are important in the development of drugs to assist in the screening of compounds. This research increased and prepared the compound delivery from 115 to 190 mushroom compounds and identified the best one with COX inhibitor potential. Performed the virtual screen study, pharmacokinetic, docking, and molecular dynamics. This present method is identified proteins in protein data bank database and evaluation their quality, identify molecules with medicinal potential from mushroom available in the literature, design and or preparation ligands and proteins in PDBQT format, evaluation of the best software, autodoc tools or autodoc vina, automation of the docking process with MOLA software, using Swiss Admin Server for obtaining pharmacokinetic data and this mount software to perform molecular dynamics. My materials is my computer, Ester Spin, and let's go to the results. The expansion of the library 3.00 was a success. The library is composed to 190 and the family's compound consists of 43% terpenes, 40 steroids, and other compounds, isoflavones, flavones, catecoides, phenols, quinones, and others. So, the LMW library, 3.0 library, has a satisfactory pharmacinetic profile, according to Swiss Admin server, with evaluates the pharmacinetic parameters or admit absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and toxic. Vina was identified as the best software for COX simulation. Performed a satisfactory forecast comparative to experimental result to constant inhibition. Virtual screening was performed. The factor compounds for molecular docking, the compounds origin A from the neonotophanous number mushroom present inhibition constant 152.4 nanomolar and clavilactone C from the cytosine clavipus mushroom had a high light inhibition against COX-2 of 52.3 nanomolar and compound of simalonic B is having interaction with the two proteins COX-1 and 2 provenient from formitopsis officinalis. So, pharmacokinetic prediction, the factory compounds is have a good drug likeness profile, according to Swiss Admin Server. The dynamic simulation for clavilactone C has the best key value, satisfactory pharmacokinetic profile, and was verified via molecular dynamics, is stability within protein. The molecule does not diffuse from the protein in over time 10 nanoseconds. Conclusion, in general, terpenes were very light against the enzymes COX-1 and 2 from the docking studies performing using autodoc vina software. Autorizin A, terpene, produced the lowest prejudice key value against COX-1 and clavilactone C with COX-2. Clavilactone C showed stability within the COX-2 through molecular dynamic simulation for 10 nanoseconds. When both COX enzymes were considered of simalonic B, provide the best profile for dual COX inhibition, COX-1 and 2. So the three related compounds maybe have anti-inflammatory potential, having as mechanism of action the inhibition of COX-1 and or 2. However, experimental verification must be performed. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Carlos, for your uh, nice presentation, quick presentation. Uh, thank you, thank you, two times. So we will uh, gather the questions until the end of the session. So uh, keep, uh, let's keep you with us and we will talk in a minute, okay? Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the presentation by Clara Grosso. Good morning, Clara. Good morning, she's with us already. Uh, Clara will talk uh, with us about silver brain, neuroprotective potential of seaweeds, subcritical water extract. So Clara, let's move on to you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation to present our results in the project Silver Brain. This is a project, uh, a collaborative project between researchers from Requint in ITZEP and Faculty of Science and Technology, and also researchers from IBET. In this project, we try to take advantage of the biggest and the richest um, uh, number of seaweeds uh, distributed worldwide, which are rich in several metabolites. And we try to, to think about what about search for new uh, neuroprotective drugs that could be very useful and beneficial for people with um, ages uh, uh, over 65 years old and to contribute to active aging. However, uh, um, working with seaweeds, it's not easy because we have to take uh, into account several associated problems. First, we have to think that waters where they are uh, produced in aquaculture or they are naturally occurring can uh, contain uh, contaminants, environmental contaminants, such as pharmaceuticals, pesticides, and heavy metals. And also some seaweeds are very rich in iodine and their contents must, uh, can be very high and can disrupt uh, thyroid and contribute to the development of thyroid disorders. Moreover, uh, preparing uh, extracts is also another uh, issue that we must to take into account that are the solvent residues. And therefore, in order to overcome this last problem, we opted by a green technology to extract the biotiff compounds, which was the supercritical water extraction. We performed the, the extraction in a temperature gradient mode in order to obtain with the same raw material several fractions from room temperature to 250 degrees. The experimental outline uh, were grouped in three main parts. First, we tried to assess the presence or the absence of, the, of several environmental contaminants, uh, which included pharmaceutical pesticides and also their transformation products and metabolites by LCMS, and also some uh, one heavy metal and iodine content by ECPMS. Concerning the extracts, the the bioactivities and the chemical composition, we target our investigations for um, right now for spectrophotometric methods to assess the chemical composition, but we hope that in future we can go further for LCMS analysis and some in future bioactivities targeting the, extra, the oxidative stress and also enzymes involved in, the, in several neurodegenerative and psychiatric diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and depression. Concerning the uh, assessment of the, uh, the presence or absence of contaminants, we were glad to, to see that all the extracts were free of pharmaceuticals and pesticides. However, uh, they have uh, a problem of high amounts of iodine and arsenic. As you can see by the graphics, in the first steps at 19 degrees and 140 degrees, um, there are a, a high amount of iodine and arsenic that are leached. I would like to call your attention that uh, as long as the extraction pro uh, progress, the, the amounts are even less and less and less. But uh, in, in, the, in the case of the arsenic uh, content, I would like to call your attention that in the first steps, the kind of uh, arsenic that is leached is the an organic one, which is the more toxic one. So we cannot use the first and second step of the extraction for further assays. And then in, at 119 degrees, in the case of fucus we can say that 
there's a, a little bit more arsenic that are leach, but it is the organic fraction, which is less harmful. So uh, taking all these results into account, we decided to go further for the bioactivities assessment with just the uh, step three and step four of the extraction. For both uh, seaweeds, the Fucus vesiculosus, that is a brown seaweed, and Codytomentosus, that is a green seaweed. Concerning the bioactivities, uh, in the case of the antioxidant activity, you can see that the lowest IC50 value, which means the concentration that inhibits the radicals or the, the antioxidant activity uh, in 50%, for the um, superoxide radical and for the nitric oxide radical, we can see that the extract, the more active fractions are the ones that were obtained in the last step of the extraction at 250 degrees. Therefore, we decided to uh, go into more activities to see if they are very, they are beneficial for neuroprotective activities. And then we tested all, only the fraction three and four of these two, by the two seaweeds in several uh, enzyme assays. As you can see, for the acetylcholinesterase inhibition and butyrylcholinesterase inhibition that are enzymes involved in Alzheimer's disease, only the um, extract of uh, codiotomatose obtained at 250 degrees were active. And the same for the other enzymes. The fourth step was all, were all, always the most active one. So we decided to go look and, and see what kind of chemi uh, chemical composition was um, um, due to, uh, these bioactivities were due to which kind of chemical compounds. And as you can see, the um, phenolic compounds that are the most widespread uh, compounds in seaweed extracts, you can see that uh, they are decreasing from step one to step four in the case of Fucus vesiculosus, but there are a little bit increase in the codiotomentoso uh, case. But we have to take in account that there are several interference in the Falancio Calto test, so we need to, to, to see these results with uh, some caution. And the same for the total, uh, total fl uh, flavonoid content and uh, fluoroctanin content that is decreasing along the extraction. So we decided to see in the literature what kind of compounds could contribute to the bioactivities at 250 degrees. And we came across with the uh, Maillard reaction that is well described in the supercritical uh, subcritical water extraction processes because it takes a uh, high, high temperature and um, it, uh, it results from the reaction of reducing sugars and amino acids that we could see that are increasing from step one to step four in our extractions. As you can see, the colorless, colorless intermediates uh, my reaction products, the yellow... Uh, Clara, Clara yes. uh, two minutes, okay? Yes, two yes. The, the yellow ones and the brown ones are always increasing uh, along the, the, the extraction and they can contribute to the bioactivities because they are already reported as antioxidant um, compounds. Therefore, we can conclude that the supercritical food, uh, Super, uh, subcritical water extraction is a very versatile uh, technique to obtain several fractions from the same raw material. Uh, they can eliminate from step one to step four high amounts of he heavy metals and iodine. And at the same time, we, we can obtain extracts with good activity in terms of antioxidant and neuroprotective effects. And these bioactivities can be a combination of a low amount of phenolic compounds and a high amount of Maillard reaction products. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the organizing committee for the opportunity to, to present results and to all the financial institutions and all the, research, the researchers that contributed to these results. Thank you very much. 
Thank you again, Clara, and for your talk, for your wonderful presentation. Let's move on to Katya, Katya Kramberger presentation. We will ask you the questions in the final session. Okay, Clara. So Katya Kramberger will present the work in Titan entitled Elicrisium Italicum, Italicum Infusion Stimulates Energy Expenditure and Fat Oxidation After Acute Ingestion in Humans, a pilot study. Katia, hello, good morning, uh, let's move on to you. Clara, please um, stop sharing the... Um, Sorry. Yeah, thank you, yes. thank you. So Katia, let's move on to you, thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, just a second. Okay, uh, so uh, yes, I will present to you um, a pilot study with Helichrysum Italicum uh, that we conducted on healthy male uh, volunteers. Uh, the study was performed by our research group at the Department of Nutritional Counseling uh, within the Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Primorska. Uh, we are located at the coastal region uh, of Slovenia, and our research is mainly focused on um, Mediterranean plants and uh, functional uh, foods in general. Uh, but lately, our focus is mainly on uh, helichrysum, which is also a topic of my PhD uh, work. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with this plant. It is uh, characteristic of Mediterranean region. Uh, it can be uh, recognized by its yellow fate resistant inflorescences, uh, which are uh, rich in uh, bioactive secondary metabolites. Um, uh, and these um, bioactive compounds, compounds are synthesized uh, as a result of adaptation uh, to this demanding environment. Pro uh, apart from volatile terpenes, uh, which are mainly present in, in the essential oil, the plant is also rich in phenolic compounds, uh, which are rather polar compounds uh, and also uh, well-known antioxidants. Uh, due to uh, its um, rich uh, biochemical profile, Helichrysum italicum uh, possesses uh, many promising pharmacological activities. Uh, this plant uh, has been traditionally used uh, for respiratory infections, uh, digestive problems, and for inflammatory skin conditions. Uh, uh, it, but it has been also uh, investigated uh, scientifically, both uh, in vitro as in vivo, uh, but mainly on um, single isolated compounds. Uh, therefore, we wanted to uh, investigate whole plant water extracts, so-called infusions, which are um, often used in uh, traditional medicine. Our aim was to explore acute effects of uh, helichrysum italicum uh, infusions on uh, resting uh, metabolic rate and possible uh, subst uh, substrate uh, differences in substrate oxidation in uh, healthy male subjects. Um, we also performed um, additional um, uh, in vitro experiments uh, to further investigate the mechanism of action of uh, helichrysum uh, infusion. Um, an infusion was prepared by uh, immersing one gram of um, helichrysum in uh, boiling water for 10 minutes and then um, 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 chemical composition was determined as well. Um, and for the pilot study, 11 male adults were divided into uh, two groups uh, and assigned to either um, bioactive beverage or a placebo beverage, which was uh, just a hot water. And then to the, uh, another, to the other beverage, 
after seven days uh, of the washout period. Um, metabolic rate and substrate oxidation uh, were measured by uh, indirect calorimetry um, at uh, pre-ingestion, this was at the baseline, uh, and um, after 30 and 120 minutes uh, post-ingestion. And for the gene expression analysis, uh, RNA was isolated from infusion-treated um, and control hepatocytes, uh, and we used um, HEPG2 cell line for this purpose. Um, we identified various uh, um, chemical uh, compound classes, uh, among which um, capillokinic acids were the most abundant, uh, and uh, followed by pyrons and flavanols. Um, using calorimetry measurements, we, um, um, we found that uh, a single uh, ingestion of helichrysum uh, infusion uh, um, caused a um, slight but a significant increase in energy expenditure uh, in healthy male um, subjects uh, compared to the placebo beverage. Uh, as well as a decrease in uh, respiratory quotient after 30 minutes and still after 120 minutes uh, post-ingestion. Uh, a similar trend was also observed for um, fatty, uh, fatty ox fat oxidation, uh, uh, we, uh, which was also increased um, after, uh, compared to the placebo. Uh, however, um, no uh, significant change was observed for the blood pressure over time, uh, except for the, um, for the diastolic blood pressure um, at the 30 minutes post-ingestion. Um, um, uh, the same effect um, was uh, also observed, um, uh, confirmed in in vitro experiments um, regarding fat oxidation, uh, where we found um, an upregulation of fatty acid genes, um, uh, genes responsible for fatty acid oxidation, uh, such as uh, CPT1 and CPT2, uh, and also a downregulation of ACC gene. Uh, which is involved in uh, fatty acid synthesis. However, um, no uh, significant change was observed for DGAT, uh, which occurs uh, as the terminal, um, in the terminal step of um, triglyceride synthesis. Um, with the present study, uh, we have gained some uh, insight into uh, the activity of helichrysum italicum uh, in humans, which was very scarce before. Um, we have shown that um, he uh, helichrysum italicum infusion um, stimulates both resting energy expenditure and fat, fat oxidation in normal weight men, uh, which was uh, also confirmed in um, vitro uh, on molecular level. Um, this poses a possibility that consumption of helichrysum italicum may have a beneficial effect on an individual's ability to maintain uh, lower body fat levels. Um, however, uh, further um, studies um, under pathophysiological conditions and uh, in long-term use are necessary to um, draw more uh, solid conclusions. Um, I thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Katya. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. Let's leave again as your, as your colleagues uh, the questions until the end of the session and move on for the last presentation of this session by Teresa Braz. Hello, Teresa, good morning. Uh, Teresa will talk uh, with us about ketosan-based films loaded with uh, 
picrine enriched extract from Sinara Cardunculus anti inflammatory potential. So, Teresa, let's move on to you. Thank you. So, good morning. As was already said, my presentation is about, about the chitosan based films loaded with, with Sinara picrine enriched extracts from Sinara Cardunculus and the assessment of its anti inflammatory potential. <clears throat> Okay, but first let me talk to you about cisquiterpene lactones group that for sure are familiar for most of you and comprises over 5,000 known compounds. Cisquiterpene lactones are considered one of the most prevalent and biologically significant group of secondary metabolites with described biological activities such as antitumoral, antimicrobial, antimalarial, anti-inflammatory um, uh, activities among others. And for that, they are considered a valuable resource in terms of health applications. Besides having a good amount of biomass production that can range from 7.8 to 20 tons by weight per hectare, Sinara Cardunculus is also a great source of cisquiterpene lactone, and for that was selected to be used as a case studies in this project. As observed by Ramos et al. during the lipophilic fraction characterization of Sinara Cardunculus uh, leaves extract, uh, Cisquiterpene lactones may have a content near to 95 grams per kilogram of dry weight. And from the ones identified, Sinaropicrine was uh, considered the, the one in major quantities with almost 87 grams per kilogram of dry weight. Several studies had focused on Sinaropicrine high biological potential, where anti inflammatory potential is of particular interest when thinking in terms of wound dressing applications. Since extensive inflammation plays a major role in the disruption of normal healing cascade, presenting a significant psychological, physical, and financial burden for patients. When compared to systemic delivery, localized drug delivery systems may reduce undesired side effects such as toxicity, toxicity and suboptimal uh, delivery. Besides, they provide spatial temporal control over the drug dosage. <coughs> that, sorry directly at the home site and protects and also protects the drug from metabolic deactivation and maintains the drug concentration at the desired level. Nevertheless, an appropriate and immediate coverage of the wound area when adequate dressing is essential for wound protection in order to accelerate wound healing. And in a constant need to improve patients' lives and decrease ambulatory costs, in the last two decades, efforts have been made toward the design of new wound dressings with the incorporation of bioactive materials such as chitosan, regarded one of the most promising materials for wound dressings due to its unique properties. That can be improved by incorporation of bioactive compounds such as cinerapicrine, that in combination with its anti-inflammatory potential may lead to an enhanced wound healing. And from that, the global aim of this work was the design and production of Sinaropicrine from Sinarda Cardunculus and leaves, uh, enriched leaves extracts and its application on a chitosan matrix as a wound dressing for anti-inflammatory drug delivery. On what concerns to the, the film development, they were developed by the solvents evaporation method where chitosan membranes were loaded with different extract concentration and obtaining dense and thermal stable membranes. In what concerns to the mechanical properties, namely the puncture stress, the films produced presented a lower mechanical resistance when compared to the control one, what was mainly attributed to the presence of hydrophobic compounds such as cinerapicrine, and also to the molecular interactions between the extract and chitosan, leading to the weakness on the polymer chain aggregation forces. Nevertheless, the produced films were still able to be applied as a wound dressing since the human skin, uh, human skin tensile strength is located between 5 and 30 megapascals. The swelling effect was also evaluated and also a decrease on the film swelling capacity was observed with increasing extract concentration, what was assumed to be correlated to the decrease of the polymer hydrophilicity leading to a lower swelling ability. This lower swelling ability indicates that developed films are suitable to be used on light exudate homes. According to the International Standard Guidelines for Biological Evaluation of Medical Devices, a cell viability reduction higher than 30% is considered to present cytotoxic effect. 
and the analysis of the results for, that, uh, for the cell viability assay using the BJ cell line indicated that the films with 1 and 5% extract were not considered cytotoxic with toxicity highly correlated to the sinuropicrine extract content. With IL-6 as one of the key pro-inflammatory factors produced by dermofibroblasts in response to certain stimuli, normal human skin fibroblasts were stimulated using liposaccharides from E. coli and exposed to film extracts in order to understand the film anti-inflammatory potential. And the results revealed that a slightly decrease with the lower extract content was observed and the strongest effect was observed for the 5% extract with, re with a reduction of 86% um, and 83% in the IL-6 expression by skin fibroblasts comparatively to the stimulated uh, cells and also to the ones uh, exposed to the, the commercial anti-inflammatory pyroxicum. When comparing the IL-6 effect of the extract and the sinuropicrine standard, a more potent anti-inflammatory was observed for the extract comparatively to the sinuropicrine. These results disclose the potential to, be, to, the, to the extract to be used as a wound dressing uh, for chronic wounds. To conclude, uh, at the end of this work, it was possible to conclude that uh, to observe uh, that a decrease of the volumetric swelling capacity was observed with the extract loading. What could be adva advantages for wound dressings where an excessive fluid sorption is not desired? Also, a decrease on the tensile strength with the extract loading was observed, although still inside of the skin parameters. The film loaded with 10% extract presented cytotoxic effect to the BJ fibroblast cell line, what was correlated to the sinuropicrine content. On what concerns to the IL-6 levels on the LPS-stimulated skin fibroblasts, the film with chitosan and chitosan loaded with 1% presented the same effect obtained with pyrox commercial, pyroxicum, commercial anti inflammatory pyroxicum. The film, uh, on the other side, the film with 5% percent present, five percent extract presented a significant reduction on the IL-6 levels, showing its potential for chronic wound management. To finish, I would like to thank to, re to the research and uh, to, to the research institutions, to the funding uh, institution, the Faculdade de Ciência e Tecnologia, and to the funding projects, Valbiotech Sinara, Medicinara Biotech, and also to all the research team, and to you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you for your wonderful presentation and fast presentation. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Uh, let's move on now for a little session of questions. I have here three questions and no more. We do not have time for more also. The first question is for Anna Serra. So Anna, are you listening to me? Or I don't know if Anna is here. Yes. Yes, okay. Anna, uh, the question that I have here for you is, uh, are there already in the market some natural based medicines for the purposes of your study? Did you were, or you were able to compare results in terms of efficacy with your natural products? Uh, so, uh, well, um, in the case of hydroxytyrosol, for instance, there are already, already companies that are selling the compound isolated for, for uh, food and for cosmetic applications. Uh, and well, concerning uh, um, the the use of this type of of this type of compo compounds for cancer, well, this is uh, um, uh, this is uh, well not uh, this is this is uh, well uh, this is not uh, uh, regulam regulamented uh, well, mm -hmm. and yes. uh, there are the the claims that are already. Um, uh, reported uh, f uh, in the EFSA, well, uh, are more related with cardiovascular diseases mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, metabolic diseases. Uh, mm -hmm. So for cancer, it is, it is, 
it's quite difficult, difficult to, yes, yes of course of course so uh, regulation regulation is the next step yes. for yes. for your study yes. and we hope that uh, all of this is towards that uh, that path thank you again Teresa. Uh, another question that i have for carlos shiraishi hello carlos can you listen to me it's a question for from marcio carocho uh, he says that, thank you for your interesting presentation. Uh, I saw you use Autodoc Vina for the docking studies. Any specific reason for using that one? And did you try any other docking program to compare your results? Uh, I compared my results with the experimental uh, values disponible, disponible in Pit Protein Data Bank. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm using protein, uh, in, uh, pro in, in vision protein, uh, mm -hmm. and and realizing the the cross docking. Uh, I'm I'm validating my simulation in this mo this mode. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you again, Carlos. Um, the last question is for Katia. Katia Kramberger. Yes. Know, yes. Hello, Katia. Uh, the question that I have for you is: um, Did you ever thought on using other type of pref uh, preparation extracts besides infusion? Do you think that the infusion extract is the best one to obtain the amount of bioactive compounds that you need to to see the health uh, effects that you want? Um. Our primary goal was to um, use such an pre such preparation that is um, the most suitable um, for the consumption in humans. Mm -hmm. As and um, we um, looked up um, for the preparation that are uh, mainly used in uh, traditional medicine, and uh, then uh, there the most common ones are mm -hmm. uh, infusions or decoctions. Um, yes. Uh, namely, uh, some water-based preparations that are easily to prepare, uh, easily prepared. Um, so uh, yes, um, that's why we used uh, this one. Um, but also, um, in our previous study, when uh, where we investigated um, uh, chemical composition of um, helichrysum in general. Mm -hmm. Helichrysum italicum in general, we also used um, ethanolic extracts and methanolic extracts. Um, these are um, somehow richer in, um, of course, richer in um, phenolic Bio compounds, yeah. phenolic, but yeah. um, are not so appropriate for ingestion. For ethanolic, yes, yeah. but methanolic, definitely. No, no, it's a question of safety and the yes. final purpose yes. of your of your extract. So. Thank you, Katya, for your uh, answer. Thank you all again for your wonderful presentations. Thank you again for uh, Anna, Dr. Anna Barros for the invited lecture that she gave us to us. And let's move on to the pitch session um, and the last session of, the, of this morning. So uh, I will now pass the word to my colleague, Philippe Reis, that will moderate the next session. Thank you all and good morning.